that I wouldn't have I wouldn't have really batted an eyelid at that one. The fact that Kaiser made it to R5, kind of absurd, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, but the Annie gonna be locked in here. Definitely a fiery theme, um, as it's only the Rel that doesn't have red in the portrait. And D Plus look like they have a composition from a little while ago. Uh, with Aphelios back once again. I think as far as champions that do not spark joy, Aphelios is right at the top of the list for me at the moment. One was looking rough, carrying Gumishi were challenging the 2v2s quite frequently, and now... Whoa! Oh, oh man. Okay. Not um, a good luck. No. But it hasn't been the case, as now Carrier has to walk his way out. Kellen takes a turret shot. They're going to have to move out of the way as well. Two plates! My gosh! On his way to Worlds as a sixth place DRX, and I yeah. would not wish that upon my worst enemy. Exactly. We'll see whether they can get there. Relying upon some silver scrapes and Deft alongside Kellen with their gigantic CS lead that they have at this early stage of the game. There is a Q. All out comes forward as well as Canyon wanting to wait for the Flash to come in. As Zayas is trying to end the world, they do manage to get the Permafrost. There's the layering of CC and there is no Flash option here as First Blood goes to Kana. Uh, they are looking to open up on the bottom side of the map towards the Dragon. We're going to get a replay and yeah, Kana just plays it well. Q3, ults him back. And then Zayas just has nowhere really to go. He tries to play into the brush to dodge away. That just means his death is guaranteed. Yeah, and Canyon does flash for it in the end. Kind of going to give him the death thumbs up. Um, you know, you take your good things where you can find them. As uh, Kana tanking up the turret momentarily. He's going to get in, uh, infernally chained. But now Kana behind the turret. Going to be pretty happy with this situation. Has his Bramble Vest completed, as well as his Steel Caps. And Zayas will now just try and fight him, and maybe he can just win, as All Out is available. Kanner is going to try and dash to where he can actually escape as the Q3 comes down. Kanner is looking for it. He breaks the chains, finds a Q. Will he have another dash? Who will have the dash first? And the answer is Zayas, and he has a Q, and he's just going to get a solo. Not really sure what Kanner was going for when he opted to take two tower hits into Proxy, but... That is the end result. Zayas punishes him, and uh, she'll make it. Yeah, there is a Magnet Storm from Ona, but he's taking a lot of damage. Canyon doesn't have a lot, though, to offer as Tibbers trying to keep Shelly busy. And if this is no charge, it is no value, and it is going to be exactly that. Talk the whole series of T1 win this game. I think that's that is uh, Zayas. We're going to have a look at it from his perspective. Yeah, yeah, just, okay. Such an overcommit from Kana. And the thing is, he used all his abilities on the wave, so he has no way to escape. So he's like, you know what? Let's just go in instead. Uh, and again, flips him closer to him. Tata. Just just a miss a misread, misplay. Yeah, Showmaker has teleported in. Gumiushi could be in trouble as they're diving forward. They just get the feather storm. As Showmaker now gonna get taken down so incredibly low. He is drilled in and Def not able to offer any damage back. That's actually Zayas getting another kill. This could be gigantic as Canyon has to back away from the area. Faker out of the series, but maybe I'll lie in bed at night under it. Maybe. As Canyon, I thought that maybe he presses R button, but decides to hold onto it for the moment. Faker now trying to fight Showmaker here, as this time he's going to jump in and grab himself a kill. Might be able to get a bear at the same time. So that or is a uh, objective trade. It looks like pick. the answer is no, as we're going to have a look at this from Gumi Yushi's no, perspective. It's like Shock Blast mid misses. You know he has open flash. And you just get way too close. And the thing is, you also lose flash from uh, death as well. Yeah. I mean, it was good for credit to Gumi Yushi for getting the root, even though the old feathers he sidestep, he got the root anyway. Yeah, and this one is just, you know, Canyon's always very patient with his passive, stacks it up, gets the stun, layer the ult on it. Right, this is a little bit different because Aphelios needs lots of items as, wow, Canyon gonna find the gap on Tsugumiyushi there. Um, but he had no against yes, T1 comp. There's so much engage. Oh, Carrier? Yeah, he's gonna get Dove on once again. He's desperately looking for these flanks as he battle dances, has the extended range, and that shock blast, fantastic here. From just the, it was the item nerfs prior that were the big problem. As oh, and of course. D Plus are just going to start this one up. They do have a lot of damage available. Um, there are some decent guns as well for doing damage to Baron and for team fighting as a teleport is going to be picked I could up. see him saying that it's a good move. As D Plus are going to. Oh, that's a lot of damage onto a priority target here as Kanner is not going to waste any time. They get a Feather Storm already. It's angled pretty nicely here, but now Zayas realizes that he cannot stay in this Baron pit. And T1 losing all of this damage on their main carry is going to give D-plus an opportunity. 
to head over towards the Baron themselves. Carrier looking for that flank angle and Faker is still there. Flash tip is both available. Canyon needs to be careful with his positioning also as Deep Plus. They have a feeling that Carrier is lurking over the wall. The control are going to spot him out as now Zayas wanting to get back into the fight once again. DK, they back away. Moonlight Vigil clips Faker right on the edge and they grab the seat. Oh, Canyon not able to get an owner. Walks down the Baron, but can Deep Plus find the fight? The Avalios already taken out and T1! Oh, it's the lethality on this Aatrox, and he decided he's not going to get one shot. He is one-shotting them. With the Cerildas coming in as the third item. Rate, you know? Yeah, I know, and I can see why. And Death, Gale Force is in here, and then the Clutch Flash ult from Faker onto both oh. the carries. Layered with all that CC. So yeah, Zayas cleaned up the fight. Faker, he's back. Faker, Carrier, both of them together. The Flash Grand Entrance to make sure that they can get the quickness on yes. top. Exactly. And now go. they're aggressively pushing in. Ah, uh, that is a Glacial Prison. They do manage to get the cleanse out of Gumushu. Takes a lot of damage. The Flash comes out as Tim is into the back line. And explode goes the Lulu. But thankfully it's not death. But he has to deal with Zayas oh. who just blows him up. My god, the damage of this Aatrox is absurd! Showmaker tries to use his hammer to get rid of him, but the Infernal Chains come down, and it's a double once again. I think Zayas might get a POG for this particular game, as it's looking a little bit like a 3-1 for T1, as they take down the Inhibitor, they'll take down the Nexus turrets, and they are moving on in the playoffs. Could even be a Telecom War for the next round as well. Congratulations! To T1, feeling a little bit like a rags to riches story. It was Carrier and it was Owner who managed to catch them out. And here, once again, a bit of a weird play from Canyon. And then yeah. Baker once again finds an angle. My goodness, and Carrier just dashing around. Of course, I think Rakan has been kind of the champion of the the week. Yeah. The last two series, I think Rakan has been extraordinarily powerful, and this is the first game that Carrier gets his hands on it. They're down 30 CS in the laning phase. Wasn't enough for D Plus to actually find a victory. And that's the thing is, we kind of actually saw this in spring when D Plus played Honor Life Esports, and they were still on the like Poke Varus and Heimer uh, sort of line of thinking, whereas Honor Life were just playing like Zeri. And a similar thing happened where they won lane, and then it came with the team fight.